This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More about them later. What's up guys, Max here. Welcome back to part two of the e-scooter upgrade series. In the last video I upgraded it by giving it my DIY lithium ion battery pack and so far it has been running really smooth with it. So in this episode I'll be upgrading it by means of its looks, basically pimping it up and adding a lot of LEDs such as the headlight, tail light, indicator lights and so on. I may even add a couple of more cool little features. So let's get right into the video. This is the Razer E300 electric scooter I bought in used condition about a year ago. It features 9 inch air filled tires, a 250 watt brush to DC motor with chain drive. By the looks of it, so far it's had quite a beating and has taken on some corrosion. So let's first fix her up. To start out, I'll spray paint a few spots on the frame of the scooter. Since the electronics compartment of the scooter can't easily be taken out, I'll instead cover up what I don't want painted with a sheet of cardboard. We're only here to cover a few patches with paint. So after sanding up the sides, I sprayed on some matte blue spray paint. Next I'll unscrew the bolt of this kickstand using, you guessed it, another bolt. This is a technique that comes in handy when you don't have the right allen key size. I'll sand the kickstand clean and spray paint it with a rather shiny silver. After having bolted it back in place, now we're starting to see the restoration pay off. Guys, just before we move on with upgrading the e-scooter, I just wanted to introduce you to PCBWay, the sponsors of this video. PCBWay is a company who provides custom printed circuit board prototyping service. One of the only well-known PCB companies who also do 3D printing and CNC metal machining on the side. They also do PCB assembly along with free shipping. Get an instant quote, upload a file of your prototype to their website, select specifications, and order today from any one of their services. As a new customer, you get a free $5 coupon. A link is in the description below this video to pcbway.com. Check them out. So the next thing I like to change on the scooter is the grip tape. I'll first get rid of any decals and remaining grip tape that's on the deck and then cover the whole metallic surface of the deck with a sheet of skateboard grip tape. Now I'll score the edges, slice and peel away any excess grip tape. And here I'll just fix on a little piece on the rear that broke off earlier. Overall, the deck's new look is pretty cool. So here I'm going to bolt it back in place onto the e-scooter. I bet if I instead redid the oval grip tape look, then it wouldn't have looked as good as it does now. This was a pretty good choice. Next up, let's make this scooter a headlight. For the casing, I took apart an old torch or flashlight and took the aluminum head and threaded cobbling. I then found a spare 10 watt high power LED lying around. But in order for the LED to operate at a particularly high brightness, it's going to need a heat sink. This aluminum heat sink is what's going to dissipate most of the heat generated by this powerful LED. So here I'm sizing it down and making it circular so that it can fit into the back of the headlight piece. There you have it, it is now a round heat sink. Now I'll secure the LED and hook up a connector to its terminals. Here's that aluminum coupling I was talking about, which the LED with its heatsink slides into. This piece threads in through the back of the headlight. I'll also give this headlight a fish eye style lens that'll intensify the light coming out. 
and this transparent ring made up from a hot glue stick is just for looks. It gives this kind of ring glowing effect around the headlight. Next we'll give it this mount. Now let's prepare the whole system a 12 volt step down converter with a heat sink. Here's most of the other parts and components that will go into the scooter upgrade. Continuing on to the horn, this is a 12 volt motorcycle horn. Here I'll prepare its mounting bracket. Here's all the components that'll go into making the scooter's tail light LED chaser circuit known as the Night Rider. Let's assemble it. This circuit is driven by a triple five timer IC and CD4017 10 stage decade counter IC. I'll have to trim the corners of the circuit board so that it fits nicely into its new case. So by adjusting this potentiometer clockwise or counterclockwise, I can either increase or decrease the pattern speed. the circuit board in its case, now you can see the left to right LED Night Rider effect happen in red. Out of the three features I just made, I'll start by bolting on the headlight. Moving on to the scooter's new horn. Unlike on a bicycle, there is no vertical bar for this tail light to clamp onto, so I'll need to improvise and make a little mount for it. Here's the finished PVC mount for this tail light. The tail light simply tightens onto this vertical piece, and then the flat T section gets bolted. Now we're going to give the e-scooter some brake lights. This is a good time to recycle a few of those bottle caps that I have lying around. In case any of you were wondering, I'm using 8mm half watt bright white LEDs. I thought a good spot for these two brake lights to stick out from would be right from the cover. Now, time for the wiring for both the brake and tail lights. I wired these two lights in series to have more of an equivalent forward voltage drop to the power supply given. Alright guys, so here's the deck where lid of the scooter all kitted out with the brake and tail lights with the wires hanging down from them. The next step is to create those metal contacts that will attach onto the braking system so when I pull on the brake lever, the brake lights will turn on. Let's get onto that. Over here at the scooter itself and the lid, I'll solder on some connectors to make for removing the cover in a more convenient way. 
Now I'll relocate the main power switch of the scooter and get rid of the reset breaker. This will make space for other components. I'll take the LM2596 buck step down converter and hook it up to the 24 volt system, turning it into a common 12 volt power source for other features and components around. So since the headlight cannot accept a high power 12 volt supply, rather it needs a 10 volt supply, I use this homemade string of Schottky diodes as they have a forward voltage drop of about 0.7 volts each. Now I'll hook up the headlight and horn to the system but leaving them open circuit for now as we're not at the stage of connecting the switches up. Here's one of these USB 5V step down converters. This is a dual port module which will sit at the base of the scooter. Next up we have the RGB LED light strip which is controlled and powered through an Arduino Nano. So far this is just the prototype version also with a little passive buzzer that makes a startup sound. So here I go with the programming. Now that the code is finished uploading, here's a little demo. Ooh, some pure magic. It is time to make this circuit into its final form. Instead of the breadboard I'm using another one of those zero PCB blank boards. Additionally, with a voltage regulator of a set fixed voltage of 5 volts. Now I'll make the connections for all of the circuit elements. We should be left with power supply wires, a 5 volt wire, two digital pins, and the RGB light wires. After securing the board in place, I'll run these four wires to the outside of the scooter for the RGB lights to connect up to. With the 3M adhesive backside to these RGB LEDs, it was pretty easy mounting them onto the bottom of the scooter. Last thing for the RGB circuit are the power supply input wires which connect up to the step down converter. Seeing the result of these LEDs shining is pretty mesmerizing. So here I'll extend the two power wires which connect up to the main switch. Things look a lot more tidy with all the wires and cables bundled up together in one channel. We're getting pretty close to finishing. Next up is the control panel or switch box. These are all the switches and modules which will be sitting in this kind of configuration once in the box. Time to get slicing.
After gluing all the sides of this box together apart from the back one, I'll also glue on a bar of these three metal spoke pieces. These will reinforce the cover and allow a zip tie to be tied across. Now with the box being spray painted, things are starting to look more serious. With the components being in place, they can be secured with a bit of glue. And here comes that zip tie I was talking about. This is what allows us to tighten the whole control panel to one of the handlebars on the scooter. Now I'll connect up these wires to their appropriate switches or modules, knowing that there are 5 volt, 12 volt, and 24 volt lines. Please excuse that horrendous horn sound, that's because the cable is touching up against it. But apart from that, things seem to be working fine. With the back cover glued and mounted on, I'll seal up a few other spots as well. Onto the handlebars I decided to also mount a bicycle, computer, or cyclometer. I thought it'd be a very good thing to know the speed I'm going at, the time, and a couple of other things. Now I'm going to mount the sensor that wirelessly connects to the cyclometer. It sends pulses back to the bicycle computer letting know how many RPM the wheel is going at. Since the reed switch needs a magnet to trigger it every rotation, I decided to mount on one of my neodymium magnets onto the rim of the wheel. Though unfortunately, the cyclometer wasn't getting any signal from this sensor, so I had to extend its antenna all the way almost up to it. Solution-oriented thinking was a must here, just like anywhere. So now the bike computer started to receive signals. It's a shame these antennas emit such a weak signal. But anyway, I'm quite glad to see it finally working. But as you can see, the speed readings are completely out of tune. That's because the bicycle computer was programmed for an actual 26-inch bicycle wheel. So I'll simply reprogram it for the 9-inch wheel. In circumference, that'll be 722 millimeters. I'll hook the battery back up to the system and secure the cover back on. To make the handlebars look even cooler, I decided to take these stylish washers and bolt them onto the sides. Hmm, also why not a new throttle grip? So on paper, I made the stencils for, you guessed it, my brand and Razer E300 version 1.2. The old stickers on the scooter no longer look any good, time for a little facelift on the lettering. So I stuck these two onto the sides of the scooter and then filled in the letters with some blue spray paint. The end result looked rather clean and quite glossy too. For the final touch-ups, I made some covers for both USB port terminals.
So now that the scooter is fully pimped up, it is montage time. Alright, this scooter has been a lot of fun to make, and especially to ride. Now I have a little zippy neighborhood vehicle that I can ride around and show off my LED bling. And if you enjoyed watching this video, consider dropping a thumbs up, sharing the video, or even subscribing to the channel. That'd be much appreciated. Also feel free to comment down below letting me know what I should add in part 3 of the e-scooter upgrade. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.